This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Kurt Wong, New York, March 2007. Paradise Lost by John Milton. Book 10, Part 1. Thus they, in lowliest plight, repentant stood praying. For from the mercy seat above, prevenient grace descending had removed the stony from their hearts, and made new flesh regenerate, grow instead. That sighs now breathed unutterable, which the spirit of prayer inspired, and winged for heaven with speedier flight than loudest oratory. Yet their port, not of mean suitors, nor important less, seemed their petition, than when the ancient pair in fables old, less ancient yet than these, Deucalion and Chase Pyrrha, to restore the race of mankind drowned before the shrine of Themis stood devout. To heaven their prayers flew up, nor missed the way by envious winds blown vagabond or frustrate. In they passed dimensionless through heavenly doors, then clad with incense where the golden altar fumed by their great intercessor, came in sight before the Father's throne. Them the glad sun presenting, thus to intercede began. See, Father, what first fruits on earth are sprung from thy implanted grace in man, these sighs and prayers which in this golden censer, mixed with incense, I, thy priest, before thee bring. Fruits of more pleasing savour from thy seed, sown with contrition in his heart, than those which his own hand manuring all the trees of paradise could have produced, ere fallen from innocence. Now, therefore, bend thine ear to supplication, hear his sighs, though mute. Unskillful with what words to pray, let me interpret for him, me his advocate and propitiation, all his works on me, good or not good, in graft. My merit those shall perfect, and for these my death shall pay. Accept me, and in me from these receive the smell of peace towards mankind. Let him live before thee reconciled, at least his days numbered, though sad, till death. His doom, which I to mitigate, thus plead, not to reverse, to better life shall yield him, where with me all my redeemed may dwell in joy and bliss, made one with me, as I with thee am one. To whom the Father, without clouds serene, all thy request for man, accepted son, obtain, all thy request was my decree, but longer in that paradise to dwell, the law I gave to nature him forbids. Those pure immortal elements that no no gross, no unharmonious mixture foul, eject him tainted now, and purge him off as a distemper, gross to air as gross, and mortal food, as may dispose him best for dissolution wrought by sin that first distempered all things, and of incorrupt corrupted. I at first with two fair gifts created him endowed, with happiness and immortality. That fondly lost, this other served but to eternalize woe. Till I provided death, so death comes his final remedy, and after life tried in sharp tribulation, and refined by faith and faithful works to second life, waked in the renovation of the just, resigns him up with heaven and earth renewed. But let us call to synod all the blessed through heaven's wide bounds, from them I will not hide my judgments, how with mankind I proceed, as now with peccant angels late they saw, and in their state, though firm, stood more confirmed. He ended, and the sun gave signal high to the bright minister that watched. He blew his trumpet, heard an orb since perhaps when God descended, and perhaps once more to sound at general doom. The angelic blast filled all the regions, from their blissful bowers of amaranth and shade, fountain or spring, by the waters of life, where they ere they sate in fellowships of joy. The sons of light hasted, resorting to the summons high, and took their seats, till from his throne supreme the Almighty thus pronounced his sovereign will. O sons, like one of us man is become to know both good and evil, since his taste of that defended fruit. But let him boast his knowledge of good lost and evil got. Happier had it sufficed him to have known good by itself and evil not at all. He sorrows now, repents, and prays contrite. My motions in him longer than they move. 
His heart I know, how variable and vain self left. Least, therefore, his now bolder hand reach also of the tree of life and eat, and live for ever, dream at least to live for ever, to remove him I decree, and send him from the garden forth to till the ground whence he was taken, fitter soil. Michael, this my behest have thou in charge. Take to thee from among the cherubim thy choice of flaming warriors, least the fiend, or in behalf of man, or to invade vacant possession some new trouble raise. Haste thee, and from the paradise of God, without remorse drive out the sinful pair from hallowed ground the unholy, and denounce to them and to their progeny from thence perpetual banishment. Yet least they faint at the sad sentence rigorously urged, for I behold them softened and with tears bewailing their excess, all terror hide. If patiently thy bidding they obey, dismiss them not disconsolate. Reveal to Adam what shall come in future days, as I shall thee enlighten. Intermix my covenant in the woman's seed renewed. So send them forth, though sorrowing, yet in peace. And on the east side of the garden, place or entrance up from Eden's easiest climbs, cherubic watch, and of a sword the flame wide waving, all approach far off to fright, and guard all passage to the tree of life. Least paradise a receptacle proof to spirits foul, and all my trees there prey, with whom stolen fruit man wants more to delude. He ceased, and the archangelic power prepared for swift descent, with him the cohort bright of watchful cherubim. Four faces each had, like a double Janus, all their shapes bangled with eyes more numerous than those of Argus, and more wakeful than to drowse, charmed with Arcadian pipe, the pastoral reed of Hermes, or his opiate rod. Meanwhile, to resolute the world with sacred light, Leucothea waked, and with fresh dews embalmed the earth. When Adam and first matron Eve had ended now their horizons, and found strength added from above, new hope to spring out of despair, joy but with fear yet linked. Which thus to Eve his welcome words renewed. Eve, easily may faith admit that all the good which we enjoy from heaven descends, but that from us ought should ascend to heaven so prevalent as to concern the mind of God high blessed, or to incline his will hard to belief may seem. Yet this will prayer, or one short sigh of humane breath, upborne even to the seat of God. For since I sought by prayer the offended deity to appease, kneeled and before him humbled all my heart, methought I saw him placable and mild, bending his ear. Persuasion in me grew that I was heard with favor, peace returned home to my breast, and to my memory his promise that thy seed shall bruise our foe, which then not minded in dismay, yet now assures me that the bitterness of death is past, and we shall live. Whence hail to thee, Eve rightly called, mother of all mankind, mother of all things living, since by thee man is to live, and all things live for man. To whom thus Eve, with sad demeanor meek, Ill worthy I such title should belong to me, transgressor, who for thee ordained a help became thy snare. To me reproach rather belongs, distrust and all dispraise. But infinite pardon was my judge, that I who first brought death on all am graced the source of life. Next favorable thou, who highly thus to entitle me vouchsafed, far other name deserving. But the field to labor calls us now with sweat imposed, though after sleepless night. For see the morn, all concerned with our unrest, begins her rosy progress smiling. Let us forth, I never from thy side henceforth to stray, where'er our day's work lies, though now enjoined laborious till day droop. While here we dwell, what can be toilsome in these pleasant walks? Here let us live, though in fallen state content. So spake, so wished much humbled Eve, but fate subscribed not. Nature first gave signs, impressed on bird, beast, air, air suddenly eclipsed after a short blush of morn. Nigh in her sight the bird of Jove stooped from his airy tour. Two birds of gayest plume before him drove. 
down from a hill the beast that reigns in woods first hunter then pursued a gentle brace goodliest of all the forest heart and hind direct to the eastern gate was bent their flight adam observed and with his eye the chase pursuing not unmoved to eve thus spake o eve some further change awaits us nigh which heaven by these mute signs in nature shows forerunners of his purpose or to warn us haply too secure of our discharge from penalty because from death released some days how long and what till then our life who knows or more than this then we are dust and thither must return and be no more why else this double object in our sight of flight pursued in the air and o'er the ground one way the self-same hour why in the east darkness ere day's mid course and morning light more orient in yon western cloud that draws o'er the blue firmament a radiant white and slow descends with something heavenly fraught he erred not for by this the heavenly bands down from a sky of jasper lighted now in paradise and on a hill made alt a glorious apparition had not doubt and carnal fear that day dimmed adam's eye not that more glorious when the angels met Jacob in Manahem, where he saw the field pavilion with his guardians bright, nor that which on the flaming mount appeared in Dothan, covered with a camp of fire against the Syrian king who to surprise one man, assassin-like, had levied war, war unproclaimed. The princely hierarch in their bright stand there left his powers to seize possession of the garden. He alone, to find where Adam sheltered, took his way, not unperceived of adam who to eve while the great visitant approached thus spake eve now expect great tidings which perhaps of us will soon determine or impose new laws to be observed for i descry from yonder blazing cloud that veils the hill one of the heavenly host and by his gate none of the meanest some potentate or of the thrones above such majesty invests him coming yet not terrible that i should fear nor sociably mind as raphael that i should much confide but solemn and sublime whom not to offend with reverence i must meet and thou retire he ended and the archangel soon drew nigh not in his shape celestial but as man clad to meet man over his lucid arms a military vest of purple flowed livelier than melibion or the grain of sarah worn by kings and heroes old in time of truce iris had dipped the woof his starry helm unbuckled shewed him prime in manhood where youth ended by his side as in a glistering zodiac hung the sword satan's dire dread and in his hand the spear adam bowed low he kingly from his state inclined not but his coming thus declared adam heaven's high behest no preface needs sufficient that thy prayers are heard and death then do by sentence when thou didst transgress defeated of his seizure many days given thee of grace wherein thou mayst repent and one bad act with many deeds well done mayst cover well may then thy lord appeased redeem thee quite from death's rapacious claims but longer in this paradise to dwell permits not to remove thee i am come and send thee from the garden forth to till the ground whence thou wast taken fitter soil he added not for adam at the news heart-struck with chilling gripe of sorrow stood that all his senses bound eve who unseen yet all had heard with audible lament discovered soon the place of her retire o oh, unexpected stroke worse than of death must i thus leave thee paradise thus leave thee native soil these happy walks and shades fit haunt of gods where i had hope to spend quiet though sad the respite of that day that must be mortal to us both o oh, flowers that never will in other climate grow my early visitation and my last at even which i bred up with tender hand from the first opening bud and gave ye names who sh now shall rear ye to the sun or rank your tribes and water from the ambrosial fount the lastly nuptial bower by me adorned with what to sight or smell was sweet from thee how shall i part and whither wander down into a lower world to this obscure and wild 
How shall we breathe in other air less pure, accustomed to immortal fruits? Whom thus the angel interrupted mild. Lament not, Eve, but patiently resign what justly thou hast lost. Nor set thy heart thus over fond on that which is not thine. Thy going is not lonely. With thee goes thy husband, him to follow thou art bound. Where he abides, think there thy native soil. Adam by this from the cold sudden damp recovering, and his scattered spirits returned, to Michael thus his humble words addressed. Celestial, whether among the thrones or named of them the highest, for such shape may seem prince of both princes, gently hast thou told thy message, which might else in telling wound and in performing end us. What besides of sorrow and dejection and despair our frailty can sustain, thy tidings bring. Departure from this happy place, our sweet recess, and only consolation left familiar to our eyes. All places else inhospitable appear and desolate, nor knowing us, nor known. And if by prayer incessant I could hope to change the will of him who all things can, I would not cease to worry him with my assiduous cries. But prayer against his absolute decree no more avails than breath against the wind, blown stifling back on him that breaths it forth. Therefore to his great bidding I submit. This most afflicts me, that departing hence, as from his face I shall be hid, deprived his blessed countenance. Here I could frequent with worship place by place where he vouchsafed presence divine, and to my sons relate. On this mount he appeared, under this tree stood visible among these pines, his voice I heard, here with him at this fountain talked. So many grateful altars I would rear of grassy turf, and pile up every stone of luster from the brook in memory, or monument to ages, and thereon, offer sweet-smelling gums and fruits and flowers. In yonder nether world, where shall I seek his bright appearances, or footsteps trace? For though I fled him angry, yet recalled to life prolonged and promised race, I now gladly behold, though but his utmost skirts of glory, and far off his steps adore. To whom thus Michael with regard benign? Adam, thou knowest heaven his, and all the earth, not this rock only. His omnipresence fills land, sea, and air, and every kind that lives, fomented by his virtual power and warmed. All the earth he gave thee to possess and rule, no despicable gift. Surmise not then his presence to these narrow bounds confined of paradise or Eden. This had been perhaps thy capital seat, from whence had spread all generations, and had hither come from all the ends of the earth to celebrate and reverence thee, their great progenitor. But this preeminence thou hast lost, brought down to dwell on even ground now with thy sons. Yet doubt not but in valley and in plain, God is as here, and will be found alike present, and all of his presence many a sign still following thee, still compassing thee round with goodness and paternal love, his face express, and of his steps the track divine. Which that thou mayst believe and be confirmed, ere thou from hence depart, know I am sent to show thee what shall come in future days to thee and to thy offspring. Good with bad expect to hear, supernal grace contending with sinfulness of men. Thereby to learn true patience, and to temper joy with fear and pious sorrow, equally inured by moderation either state to bear, prosperous or adverse. So shalt thou lead safest thy life, and best prepared endure thy mortal passage when it comes. Ascend this hill, let Eve, for I have drenched her eyes, hear sleep below while thou to foresight wakest, and once thou slept while she to life was formed. To whom thus Adam gratefully replied, I send, I follow thee, safe guide, the path thou leadst me, and to the hand of heaven submit. However chastening to the evil turn my obvious breath, arming to overcome by suffering, and earn rest from labor won, if so I may attain. So both ascend in the visions of God. It was a hill of paradise, the highest, 
from whose top the hemisphere of earth in clearest ken stretched out to amplest reach of prospect lay not higher that hill nor wider looking round whereon for different cause the tempter set our adam in the wilderness to show him all the earth's kingdoms and their glory his eye might there command wherever stood city of old or modern fame the seat of mightiest empire from the destined walls of Cambalu, seat of Catayan Can and Samarkand by Oxus, Timur's throne, to Pakin of Sinaean kings, and thence to Agra and Lahore of great Mogul down to the golden Kersenes, or where the Persian and Ekbatan sat, or since in Hispahan, or where the Russian Tsar in Moscow, or the Sultan in Byzance Turkestan born. Nor could his eye not ken the empire of Negus to its utmost port Erkoko, and the less maritime kings Mombaza and Kilwa and Melind, and Sofala though Ophir to the realm of Congo and Angola farther south. Or thence from Niger fled to Atlas Mount the kingdoms of Alamansor, Fez and Sus, Morocco and Algiers and Tremincin. On Europe thence and where Rome was to sway the world. In spirit, perhaps he also saw rich Mexico, the seat of Montezuma, and Cusco and Peru, the richer seat of Atabalapa, and yet unspoiled Guiana, whose great city Jirian sons call El Dorado. But to nobler sights Michael, from Adam's eye the film removed, which that false fruit that promised clearer sight had bred, then purged with Euphrasia and Rue the visual nerve, for he had much to see and from the well of life three drops instilled. So deep the power of these ingredients pierced, even to the inmost seat of mental sight, that Adam, now enforced to close his eyes, sunk down, and all his spirits became in transit. But him the gentle angel by the hand soon raised, and his attention thus recalled. Adam! Now ope thine eyes, and first behold the effects which thy original crime hath wrought in some to spring from thee, who never touched the accepted tree, nor with the snake conspired, nor sinned thy sin, yet from that sin derived corruption to bring forth more violent deeds. His eyes he opened, and beheld a field, part arable and tilth, whereon were sheaves new wrapped the other part sheep walks and folds. Ith amidst an altar, as the landmark stood rustic, of grassy sword, thither anon a sweaty reaper from his tillage brought first fruits, the green ear and the yellow sheaf, uncalled as came to hand. A shepherd next, more meek, came with the firstlings of his flock, choicest and best. Then sacrificing laid the inwards and their fat with incense strewed on the cleft of wood, and all due rites performed. His offering soon propitious fire from heaven consumed with nimble glance and grateful steam. The others not, for his was not sincere. Whereat he and lie raged, and as they talked, smote him into the midriff with a stone that beat out life. He fell, and deadly pale groaned out his soul with gushing blood effused. Much at that sight was Adam in his heart dismayed, and thus in haste the angel cried, O oh, teacher, some great mischief hath befallen to that meek man, who well had sacrificed. Is piety thus and pure devotion paid? To whom Michael thus, he also moved, replied, These two are brethren, Adam, and to come out of thy loins, the unjust the just hath slain, for envy that his brother's offering found from heaven acceptance. But the bloody fact will be avenged, and the other's faith approved loose no reward though here thou see him die, rolling in dust and gore. To which our sire, alas, both for the deed and for the cause, but have I now seen death? Is this the way I must return to native dust? O oh, sight of terror, foul and ugly to behold, horrid to think, how horrible to feel! To whom thus Michael, dust thou hast seen in his first shape on man, but many shapes of death, and that many are the ways that lead to his grim cave, all dismal. Yet to sense more terrible at the entrance than within. Some as thou sawst by violent strokes shall die, by fire, flood, famine, by intemperance more in meats and drinks, 
which on the earth shall bring disease dire of which a monstrous crew before thee shall appear that thou mayst know what misery the inabstinence of eve shall bring on men immediately a place before his eyes appeared sad noisome dark a lazar house it seemed wherein were laid numbers of all diseased all maladies of ghastly spasm or racking torture qualms of heart-sick agony all feverous kinds convulsions epilepsies fierce catters intestine stone and ulcer colic pangs dropsies and asthmas and joint racking rooms dire were the tossing deep the groans despair attended the sick busiest from couch to couch and over them triumphant death his dart shook but delayed to strike though oft invoked with vows as their chief good and final hope sight so deform what heart of rock could long dry-eyed behold adam could not but wept though not of woman born compassion quelled his best of man and gave him up to tears a space till firmer thoughts restrained excess and scarce recovering words his plaint renewed o oh, miserable mankind to what fall degraded to what wretched state reserved better end here unborn why is life given to be thus wrested from us rather why obtruded on us thus who if we knew what we receive would either not accept life offered or soon beg to lay it down glad to be so dismissed in peace can thus the image of god in man created once so goodly and erect though faulty since to such unsightly sufferings be debased under inhuman pains why should not man retaining still divine similitude in part from such deformities be free and for his maker's image sake exempt their maker's image answered michael then forsook them when themselves they vilified to serve ungoverned appetite and took his image who they served a brutish vice inductive mainly to the sin of eve therefore so object is their punishment disfiguring not god's likeness but their own or if his likeness by themselves defaced while they pervert pure nature's healthful rules to loathsome sickness worthily since they god's image did not reverence in themselves i yield it just said adam and submit but is there yet no other way besides these painful passages how we may come to death and mix with our connatural dust there is said michael if thou well observe the rule of not too much by temperance taught in what thou eat'st and drink'st seeking from thence due nourishment not gluttonous delight till many years over thy head return so mayst thou live till like ripe fruit thou drop into thy mother's lap or be with ease gathered not harshly plucked for death mature this is old age but then thou must outlive thy youth thy strength thy beauty which will change to withered weak and gray thy senses then obtuse all taste of pleasure must forgo to what thou hast and for the air of youth hopeful and cheerful in thy blood will reign a melancholy damp of cold and dry to weigh thy spirits down and last consume the balm of life to whom our ancestor henceforth i fly not death nor would prolong life much, bent rather how I may quit fairest and easiest of this cumbrous charge, which I must keep till my appointed day of rendering up. Michael to him replied, Nor love thy life, nor hate, but what thou livest, live well, how long or short permit to heaven, and now prepare thee for another sight. He looked and saw a spacious plain, whereon were tents of various hue. By some were herds of cattle grazing, others whence the sound of instruments that made melodious chime was heard, of harp and organ, and who moved their stops and chords was seen. His volant touch, instinct, through all proportions, low and high, fled and pursued, transverse the resonant fugue. In other parts stood one who at the forge laboring, two massy clods of iron and brass had melted, other found where casual fire had wasted woods on mountain or in vale down to the veins of earth thence gliding hot to some cave's mouth or whether washed by stream from underground 
the liquid ore he drained into fit moulds prepared from which he formed first his own tools then what might else be wrought fulfil or graven in metal after these but on the heather side a different sort from the high neighbouring hills which was their seat down to the plain descended by their guise just men they seemed and all their study bent to worship god aright and know his works not hid nor those things lost which might preserve freedom and peace to men they on the plain long had not walked when from the tents behold a bevy of fair women richly gay in gems and wanton dress to the harp they sung soft amorous ditties and in dance came on the men though grave eyed them and let their eyes rove without rain till in the amorous net fast caught they liked and each his liking chose and now of love they treat till the evening star love's harbinger appeared then all in heat they liked the nuptial torch and bid invoke hymen then first to marriage rites invoked with feast and music all the tents resound such happy interview and fair event of love and youth not lost songs garlands flowers and charming symphonies attached the heart of adam soon inclined to admit delight the bent of nature which he thus expressed true opener of mine eyes prime angel blessed much better seems this vision and more hopeful of peaceful days portend than these two past those were of hate and death or pain much worse here nature seems fulfilled in all her ends to whom thus michael judge not what is best by pleasure though to nature seeming meet created as thou art to nobler end holy and pure conformity divine those tents thou sawst so pleasant were the tents of wickedness wherein shall dwell his race who slew his brother studious they appear of arts that polished life inventors rare mindful of their maker though spirit taught them but they his gifts acknowledge none yet they a beauteous offspring shall beget for that fair female troop thou sawst that seemed of goddesses so blithe so smooth so gay yet empty of all good wherein consists woman's domestic honour and chief praise bred only and completed to the taste of lustful appearance to sing to dance to dress and truel the tongue and roll the eye to these that sober race of men whose lives religious titled them sons of god shall yield up all their virtue all their fame ignobly to the trains and to the smiles of these fair atheists and now swim in joy ere long to swim at large and laugh for which the world ere long a world of tears must weep to whom this adam of short joy bereft o oh, pity and shame that they who live well interred so fair should turn aside to tread paths indirect or in the midway faint but still i see the tenor of man's woe holds on the same from woman to begin from man's effeminate slackness it begins said the angel who should better hold its place by wisdom and superior gifts received but now prepare thee for another scene he looked and saw wide territory spread before him towns and rural works between cities of men with lofty gates and towers concours in arms fierce faces threatening war giants of mighty bone and bold emprise part wield their arms part curb the foaming steed single or an array of battle ranged both horse and foot nor idly mustering stood one way a band select from forage drives a herd of beeves fair oxen and fair kine from a fat meadow ground or fleecy flock ewes and their beating lambs over the plain their booty scarce with life the shepherds fly but call an aid which tax a bloody fray with cruel tournament the squadrons join where cattle pasture late now scattered lies with carcasses and arms the ensanguined field deserted others to a city strong lay siege encamped by battery scale and mine assaulting others from the wall defend with dart and javelin stones and sulphurous fire on each hand slaughter and gigantic deeds in other part the sceptred heralds call to council in the city gates anon grey-headed men and grave with warriors mixed assemble and harangues are heard but soon in factious opposition till at last of middle age one rising eminent in wise deport spake much of right and wrong of justice of religion truth and peace 
and judgment from above. Him old and young exploded, and had seized with violent hads, had not a cloud descending snatched him thence unseen among the throng. So violence proceeded, and oppression, and sword law, through all the plain, and refuge none was found. Adam was all in tears, and to his guide lamenting turned full sad. Oh, what are these? Death's ministers, not men, who thus deal death inhumanely to men, and multiply ten thousandfold the sin of him who slew his brother. For of whom such massacre make they but of their brethren, men of men? But who was that just man, whom had not heaven rescued, had in his righteousness been lost? To whom thus Michael? These are the product of those ill-mated marriages thou sawst, where good with bad were matched, who of themselves abhor to join, and by imprudence mixed, produce prodigious births of body or mind. Such were these giants, men of high renown, for in those days might one only shall be admired, and valor and heroic virtue called, to overcome in battle and subdue nations, and bring home spoils with infinite manslaughter, shall be held the highest pitch of human glory, and for glory done of triumph, to be styled great conquerors, patrons of mankind, gods, and son of gods, destroyers rightly called, and plagues of men. Thus fame shall be achieved, renown on earth, and what most merits fame in silence hid. But he, the seventh from thee, whom thou beheldst, the only righteous in a world perverse, and therefore hated, therefore so beset with foes for daring single to be just, an utter odious truth that God would come to judge them with his saints. Him, the most high wrapped in a balmy cloud with winged steeds, did, as thou sawst, receive to walk with God in high salvation and the climes of bliss, exempt from death. To show thee what reward awaits the good, the rest what punishment, which now direct thine eyes and soon behold. End of Book 10, Part 1